Hello, my name is Mariah, and this class is an introduction to yin yoga. I'll give you a brief history on yin yoga, why we practice it, how we practice it, and then we'll begin to move through some postures. So to give you a history on yin yoga, I really have to give you a history on yoga itself. But don't worry, I'll keep it short and sweet for you guys at home. The yoga tradition began some 5,000 years ago and has been changing and developing ever since. More recently, in the last two centuries, yoga became a much more dynamic physical practice with influence from movement styles such as gymnastics, wrestling, martial arts, and even dance. With yoga becoming a much more dynamic practice, some of the softer, more subtle practices from yoga and the benefits of these were lost. Then, in the 1970s, a martial artist and a Taoist named Polly Zink created a practice that was softer and slower and a complement to the more dynamic yang styles of yoga. This was the beginning of yin yoga. Yin yoga then developed further with yogis like Paul Grilly, Sarah Powers, and Bernie Clark. As I mentioned previously, yoga has been changing and adapting to the times since its inception. Although this can occasionally be a controversial topic with more traditional yoga practitioners. However, today's modern yoga does borrow ideas from yoga philosophy, Buddhism, Eastern mysticism, psychology, and functional movement. And yin yoga itself also draws upon traditional Chinese medicine principles with its yin yang theory, five element theory, and meridian line systems. I'll speak more about these in depth in later classes. So why do we practice yin yoga? Yin yoga is a complement to our more yang styles of yoga or other yang styles of movement like Pilates, bar, or even the gym. Yang practices build heat in the body, get the heart pumping, energize the student, and work on the yang tissues of the body, such as the muscles. The yin to the yang, or the other side of the same coin, is yin yoga, which is a softer, quieter, more yielding meditative practice that encourages the student to relax and works on the yin tissues of the body. These tissues are the deeper connective tissues, such as the joints, the fascial system, ligaments, and even the bones. I'll speak more about the fascial network in more depth as well in following classes. So now we get into how we practice yin yoga. Yin and yang tissues need to be stressed in different ways to be strengthened and remodeled. Yang tissues respond better to rhythmical, repetitive activities, and yin tissues respond better to slow, gentle, sustained pressure over a period of time. Take, for example, working on biceps at the gym. You wouldn't want to hold a seven kilogram weight in a curl for five minutes. This would be working the yang tissues in a yin way, and this could actually be dangerous. Similarly, you wouldn't want to work yin tissues in a yang way. Also, it's recommended that we practice yin yoga with a cooler body. You don't need to warm up before yin. When we do this, the muscles, which are more elastic, take more of the stretch or stress, and the connective tissues, which are more plastic, will not receive the same benefits that they would if the body were cool. So, it's often said that yin is best practiced in the morning before the body warms up. However, that being said, there are no absolutes, and if you would prefer to practice yin yoga in the evening to help calm you down before sleep, then that is great as well. It really depends on the intention of what you're trying to get out of your session. Another important idea to mention before we get started is that each of our bodies is unique and different. We each have our own biology and biography. Each of us have our own bone structure, movement patterns, and perhaps past injuries. So when I demonstrate a pose, your pose may look completely different. And that's the beauty of it. Remember, in yin yoga, if you're feeling it, you're doing it. So as we practice, I encourage you to get really curious 
about how the practice feels in your body, where you're feeling the pose, and also what may be going on in the mind for you as well. I will also encourage you to use the breath as a tool in your practice. We can use the breath to help us soften into the pose and calm the mental chatter in the mind. Now, it's time to get started. So grab all of your props. You can grab bolsters, blocks, cushions, whatever you have at hand, towels, any of the props from your own home are perfect. And we'll get started in the practice. So to begin a yin yoga practice, we often start in a meditation. This can be seated or laying down, but today we're gonna to start with a seated meditation. So that being said, you can sit with your legs crossed, you can sit up on your heels if you'd like, or you can even use something to prop yourself up as well. I have these two towels, which I'm gonna sit up on, just to raise the sit bones a little bit higher and feel a little bit more comfortable in my seated meditation. So come to sit up nice and tall, ground down through the sit bones, whatever they're pressing into. Grow a little taller through the crown of the head and if it's comfortable for you, shut down the eyes. The shoulder blades can slide away from the ears and the belly can soften. And then even though you're sitting up tall, can you allow the muscles around the spine to soften as well? Now notice how you're feeling. Check in with your emotional state. Are you feeling happy or sad or anything in between? And it doesn't have to be a dramatic feeling either. It can be perhaps even irritation. It's nice to check in to see where we are before we begin the practice. And we'll start from this place. As you breathe in and out, closing down the lips. And follow the breath in and out through the nose. How could I expect you to wait for me like Keep that belly nice and soft as you breathe in and out through the nose. And trace the line of breath in through the nostrils, down the back of the throat, and into the belly. And then out of the belly or lungs, the back of the throat, and out of the nose. Maybe taking some deeper, fuller breaths here. A more expensive inhale and a full exhale. If the mind does begin to wander at all, which it generally will, that's what minds do, just gently bring it back to the breath. This is a breath-focused meditation. You needed me closer. Also notice the quality of breath here. Does it feel smooth or does it feel jagged? What is the temperature of breath on the inhale compared to the exhale? Grow a 
a little taller if you've begun to slouch. And again, soften the muscles around the spine. If your mind does wander, don't get frustrated with yourself. Know that this is the tendency of the mind and just gently bring it back to the breath. We know what we practice grows stronger. So if you're practicing frustration, you will grow frustration. If you're practicing patience, You'll grow patient. Just a few more rounds of breath here. can float to heart center. Inhale here. Exhale, bow head to heart. And then gently blink, open your eyes. Release the hands. And we'll come into our first posture. So coming into the first posture, we're coming into butterfly pose. Bring the soles of the feet together and you can bring your feet out a little bit further if that feels comfortable or they can come a little bit closer in towards the groin, but they don't have to be tightly in towards the groin. And I'm staying seated up on these towels because it actually allows me to roll my hip points forward. We wanna be able to roll our hip points forward when we're coming into forward folds. Otherwise we come back and the hips dip backwards and this can actually be challenging on our low back. So come on up, roll the hip points forward, sit on some towels or sit on a cushion and we'll get started. Hands can drape down onto your legs and then begin to roll forward here. Nice and slowly. If there's any discomfort happening in the low back at all, come on back up and you can stay seated for this posture. As we practice yin yoga, we practice three principles in yin, or the three tattvas. And those are come into the pose at an appropriate depth, Endeavor to remain still and hold for a period of time. So we come into this pose at an appropriate depth, which means we only come into about a 60 or 70% depth, or potentially where you feel the first kind of bigger sensation. We don't wanna come into full depth straight away. We wanna allow the body to open up over a period of time to yield and to soften into these yin poses. If you feel any discomfort in the knees at all, feel free to pop cushions or blankets underneath of the knees as well here or underneath of the sides of the hips. We use tons and tons of props in yin yoga, so do not be afraid to prop yourself up and make a little fort. Here, if you have a block as well, you can also make a little stand for your forehead to rest on. Or perhaps if your head is close to the floor, you can make a couple of fists with your hands and prop your head onto that. So 
So come into the appropriate depth. Come into stillness. So try not to fidget or move or wiggle. And hold. Three simple steps, although sometimes not easy. Oftentimes when we come into stillness, we may immediately feel an itch that we want to scratch. As opposed to reacting immediately to that itch, can you try to take a moment, take a pause, and just watch the sensation? One more round of breath here. And then come on up. Unwind, unravel, move nice and slowly here. And then you can use the help of your hands to bring the legs out. We'll just come into a little rebound, just taking a couple of breaths here. We come into a rebound in between postures. One more round of breath. Moving into deer pose. So the left leg can come behind you. And the right leg, the right shin can come out in front of you. I'm going to take these out from underneath of me and settle my sit bones down onto the ground. So you want to find a comfortable place where both your sit bones are down on the ground. For me, if I move the knee backwards, then my left sit bone comes off of the ground. And so I'll move my knee a little bit further forward. However, your bone structure, your anatomy is totally different than mine. And you might be comfortable moving your leg a little bit further back. You may also want to move the front heel in towards the groin a little bit more as well, a little bit closer, but again, it depends on your body. So this front leg, the right leg is in external rotation and the back leg, the left leg is in internal rotation. Oftentimes people have one more rotation or more range of motion in one direction rather than the other direction. For me, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but for me, I have limited range of motion in both, but that's just based on my bone structure. So your bone structure may, for, may allow for a greater range of motion or a smaller range of motion, and that just might be your anatomy. For the last minute or so, we're gonna take a deep breath here and then hinge over this front leg. You might wanna move in the direction of the knee or more down the center depends on what feels right for you. And this left sit bone can peel off of the ground. That's totally okay here. And again, if you have a block or a cushion here, you can place it underneath of your forehead or again, make a little fist with the hands. And just notice in the body where you're feeling this the most. Get really curious about where the sensations are coming up. Just a few more rounds of breath here. Softening into the breath, softening into the pose. One more round of breath. And then come on up. Again, unwind, moving nice and slowly. We move very slowly as we come out of these postures. Bring this back leg around out in front. And again, we'll just come through a little bit of a rebound, maybe closing down the eyes this time if it feels right. Notice where you feel this the most, kind of as an after effect. Blink open the eyes and we'll come into the other side. So this time the left shin is out in front and the right leg is behind. Again, notice this right sit bone is now popping up 
And so I'll play around with the positioning of this back knee, maybe drawing the heel in a little bit closer to my bum and get both sit bones down on the ground. So again, this front leg is externally rotated, potentially working on the adductors and maybe even hamstring. And then this leg is internally rotated. So notice where you're feeling this in the leg and also in the hip. Take a moment to settle, settle the hips down and close down the eyes. Growing nice and tall here. And consciously ask your hip points or your sit bones to settle down into the ground. Again, get curious, what's going on in your body? Also begin to explore what's going on in your mind. What thoughts or feelings are coming up for you? One more round of breath here. And then a hinge over this front leg again. I'm gonna move in direction of the knee, but you can come down the front. Moving nice and slowly. I know for me, this takes it into external rotators of that front leg, the left leg, glute med, piriformis. So there'll be moments of silence in yin. That's part of the practice. Can you get comfortable with these moments of silence? If the mind is drifting, follow the breath again. In and out through the nose. Tracing the breath down the nose, back of the throat, into the lungs, and back out again. One more round of breath here. Come on back up and out, moving nice and slowly again. You can bring this right leg around, Unwind and take a moment in this dandasana shape for another rebound. Couple of breaths here. Where are you feeling the sensation the most in the body now? Is it legs, hips, back? Really check in. One more breath here. We'll open the eyes. And we'll come onto our bellies. So coming onto the belly, keeping props nearby, because you might need them. We're in sphinx pose. So elbows underneath of the shoulders. Pubic bone pressing down into the ground, tops of the feet on the floor. But then allow the legs to soften here, the belly to soften. Notice how the low back is feeling. We're bringing a compression into the low back. So that's our target area. If this feels like too much to come into Sphinx pose up on the elbows, you can also come down a little bit more and this might feel like enough. This might feel like enough here, or even with the forehead resting in the hands. Alternatively, you can bring your hands to cross across the elbows to help you prop up a little bit more. Or you can also 
bring a cushion or a bolster underneath of the chest. And then again, this idea of remaining still. Settling into the breath. Softening the body. In yin, we're relaxing the muscles. So we're bypassing the muscles to get into our connective tissue. This fascial system, the joints, the ligaments. If the head feels heavy here, you can always prop it up on something as well. Again, a block here or fists. If there's any discomfort in the back, like pinching or pain in the form of heat or anything like that, please come on out of the pose. We do not have the saying, no pain, no gain in yin yoga. We have the saying, no pain, no pain. Again, following the breath. You can stay here in this sphinx if this feels right for your body. However, if you feel like you can have a little bit more, if the body wants to open a little bit more, you can start to come into seal. So turn your hands out and place them outside of your mat and you can begin to press yourself up. You can play around with the height. So you might wanna come up a little bit further even. Or if you feel like you have a lot of space in your low back, you can place your hands directly under your shoulders and come all the way up. Again, you have to be comfortable in the pose though, and you don't wanna be coming to 100% depth. Wherever you are, close down the eyes. And if the body ever feels ready to come out of the pose before I direct you, by all means, come on out and you can take a little mini rebound on your belly or on your back. As always, settling into the breath. Where do you feel this pose the most in the body? This compression in the low back actually helps to strengthen it. Just one more round of breath here. And then coming down nice and slowly. Lower yourself all the way to the mat. And bring one knee into the chest. Just take a couple of breaths here before we move over onto our back. Check in with the shoulders as they were being used as support and check in with your low back. One more round of breath. And we'll flip. So roll over onto your back and we'll come into our final Shavasana. We start class with a meditation. We practice our postures and then we come into Shavasana. So coming into Shavasana, you can have your palms face up if that feels right, or you can also bring your palms onto your belly if that feels nicer for you. Your feet fall apart, and then you allow the body to soften into the mat. 
Do a little body scan from the tip of your toes up to the crown of the head and notice how your body is feeling now. If there are any remaining points of tension in your body, can you ask them to consciously relax and melt into the mat? Soften your jaw, part your back teeth, maybe even remove the tongue from the roof of your mouth. And then soften your eyelids and rest here. And remember, always make time for your Shavasana. It's one of the most important postures in our practice. So I encourage you to stay here for anywhere from three minutes or upwards, but we'll end the practice together today. So you can roll over onto your side. Maybe curling up in a little ball, giving yourself a little squeeze here. And then moving slowly to complete the practice. Come to a comfortable seat. You can keep the eyes closed down, hands to heart center, and again grow tall through the crown of the head. Inhale here. Bow head to heart. Exhale. Namaste.